and welcome to All Expo and today I want to talk about Tottenham Hotspur. The run and joke about Spurs is how they just don't win trophies, but that may change soon this season with Jose Mourinho taking the Cubs very seriously. He's guided his side at the Carabao Cup final as well as they've navigated a tricky FA Cup title non-league side Marine. Mourinho's a serial winner, so if he can't deliver trophies, who can? Well using Football Manager 2021, I'm going to find out how much, if anything, Spurs have won in 5 years time. My name is James and this is Tottenham Hotspur in 2026 according to Football Manager 2021. Well there's good news, bad news, good news again and then some middle of the road news. Let's start, Jose Mourinho did deliver what he promised Spurs fans with his side winning the 2021 League Cup, ending a trophy drought of 13 years. However, sadly for Mourinho, that was the only trophy he would win and the special one was handed as P45 on the 27th of February 2022. In his place, Daniel Levy brought in another huge name and another man who wins trophies in his sleep, this time turned to former Juventus Supremo Max Allegri. It didn't take Allegri long to live up to his reputation, as just months after arriving he would guide the club to the Europa League and secure Champions League qualification despite finishing 6th in the Premier League. In 2026 he would do it again, winning yet another Europa League and giving Spurs another route in the Champions League despite not finishing the top 4 yet again. It was an impressive route to the final, with Spurs beating Ajax, Sevilla, Valencia and Inter Milan before meeting Porto in the final in Rotterdam, or anywhere, Liverpool or Rome. But no, it was definitely Rotterdam. The Italian has been with the club for more than 4 years and delivered 2 European trophies, but he struggled to get a close to the Premier League title, with his best league position being 4th. If you watched our Arsenal video you'd know that Spurs were beaten in the FA Cup final by their rivals in 2026, but just days later they would get silverware, beating Porto 3-1 in the Europa League final. Let's have a look at the starting eleven and see who else is in Max Allegri's squad. In goal was Thomas Strakosha. Spurs have got a big name in between the sticks in 2026, but no longer is it a World Cup winner. Hugo Lloris left the club in 2022, meaning Tottenham needed a new number one. First up was another Frenchman in Mike Magnan, and the former Lille lad has actually been impressive to be honest with you. But Allegri seemed to want a bigger name for the most recent season, spending £38.5 million on Lazio's Thomas Strakosha. His first year in England's gone well and ended with a trophy, so happy days all round. They've got rid of Joe Hart at least, who's now playing in the MLS for Chicago. Right back was Pedro Porro. At first glance, Max Allegri is loving his attack at fullbacks. First we've got Pedro Porro and the Spaniard is actually one of Tottenham's more exciting players. He cost just shy of £20 million from Man City in 2022 and since arriving he's helped himself to a fair few assists. Even this season he actually scored 5 goals himself. At £60 million he's got a huge value now and I think he's probably played on the right wing a bit this season on account of Tottenham also having Nelson Semedo. The current Wolves lad has also done well, getting 6 assists in his first season at Spurs. Centre back was Chris Metham. It's a strange name at centre back for Spurs, but a lad who's actually been much better than he has any right to be. Metham is currently a Bournemouth lad who's got a relegation on his CV, but on the Football Manager simulation is the Europa League winner who found the back of the net in the final. The Welshman put the icing on the cake in the 85th minute and capped off another excellent season in a Spurs shirt. For £11.5 million, Spurs have pulled off an absolute bargain here. He was alongside Fabinho. The Brazilian joined Spurs two years ago from Liverpool for £41 million and has had two solid years at the new White Hart Lane, or whatever it is they call that mega new stadium. Fabinho's proved to be a creative force this season getting 7 assists, which begs the question, surely he hasn't been playing centre back all year? But Spurs haven't got too many great options at centre half, with the best alternative probably being Matteo Lovato, who I assume is Demi Lovato's Italian brother. I'd make a pun about a Demi Lovato song but I genuinely don't know any. Sorry not sorry. Left back we've got Sergio Reguilon. Five players in we've finally got someone who is still with Spurs from the start of the simulation. Sergio Reguilon is doing well in reality and on FM he's impressed too. The Spaniard has been consistent down Tottenham's left but fortunately not too good that Real Madrid have activated their buyback clause. However there is a chance that he does leave in the summer of 2026 with Premier League champions Man United reportedly keen on the £58 million defender. Holding midfield is Oliver Skip. I'm assuming this is where Fabinho should normally be playing because to be honest with you, Oliver Skip isn't doing that well for Spurs. The academy graduate is playing a lot of football under new boss Max Allegri but it seems though he's been incredibly inconsistent. He's getting goals and some assists but his average ratings are pretty poor. Every season in the simulation he's averaged lower than a 7 which isn't great considering he's had 2 years in the championship. Next up we've got Lucas Paqueta. 
Remember a few years ago when Lucas Paquet was going to be one of the best in the world? I remember when FIFA had him playing as a 10 in my AC Milan team and the bloke was an absolute machine. Him and Ismail Assar were the talisman. But in this Tottenham team there's no Ismail Assar and Lucas Paquet has been poor since his £60 million arrival. The Brazilian got an average rating of 6.83 in his first season and he was poor in the Europa League final as well with a rating of just 6.5. Also in the field was Manuel Locatelli. If you thought Pocato was bad, just wait until you see Manuel Locatelli's averages. Wearing Tottenham's number 73 shirt for no apparent reason, this was Locatelli's fourth season with Spurs and he actually only cost him £6 million from Sassuolo. But considering his averages, maybe even that was too expensive. Tottenham have got some good players here, but it doesn't take a genius to work out that they need to improve in the middle of the park. Tanga and Dombele is technically still there, although he's just about to finish a year on loan at Napoli. On the right wing is Deli Ali. Ok, so for all of Tottenham's awful midfield options, the best one they've got is stuck on the right wing. However, this hasn't been a great year for Ali, and he didn't nearly cost the side in the Europa League final, getting a straight red card with 20 minutes to go. In the Premier League he spent most of the year coming off the bench and only managed two goals whilst providing no assists. When you compare that to the rest of the simulation, that's appalling. Deli Ali's actually been great over the past five years, but 2026 was a year to forget. But it was at least better than 2020 was in reality for Ali, who had a rough 12 months the little scally. On the left we've got Harry Kane. So first Tottenham have got their best centre mid on the right wing, now they've got their best striker on the left. Christ, they must have someone ridiculously good up front. Kane has just had his worst goal scoring year ever since he broke onto the scene, scoring just four times in the league. He also got four goals in the Europa, including one in the final. Kane has been playing brilliantly though for Spurs, he just hasn't been banging the goals at the same rate as usual, with his best Premier League tally being just 13. But anyway, why on earth is Harry Kane playing on the left wing when Tottenham still got Son Heung Min? I mean it makes no sense whatsoever and even more shockingly the South Koreans on the transfer list. With an asking price of £3.8 million a bargain, it won't be long before Son departs with Sevilla apparently interested. And up front is Troy Parrott. It speaks volumes about Troy Parrott's quality that he's forcing his captain Harry Kane to play on the left wing. Parrott is the future of Irish football and on FM in the year 2026 he's a Premier League star for Spurs. Like Kane, he scored in the Europa League final against Porto and he also added 16 goals in the Premier League, his best tally to date. He's been even better for his country, so far bagging 41 goals in 46 appearances for the Republic of Ireland. Valued at £75 million, Parrot is now a target for Manchester City, who were clearly impressed with the man who played 56 times this season and scored a stunning 32 goals in total. Ok, I see why Kane's playing on the left wing now. I haven't even got a joke here, Troy Parrott's just been really really good, so I'm not really sure what even else to say. Here's a nice picture of a real Parrott, who probably could have scored that zero yard tap in that Carlos Vinicius blasted home against Marine. So there we go, that's Tottenham in 2026 according to Football Manager 2021. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, as always don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexport and until next time we will see you around.